Hey guys, this is Kim Constable. Welcome to the Strong and Sculpted podcast, the podcast by me, Kim Constable, otherwise known as The Sculpted Vegan, about all things strong and all things sculpted. And today I want to talk about something which is absolutely killing your weight loss goals and is also one of the most commonly asked questions that I get on Instagram, which is how do I stop snacking? I also get asked a lot, Kim, what snacks do you take during the day or what snacks do you eat to keep you on your health and fitness goals? And it's a commonly asked question that kind of perplexes me, to be honest, because snacking isn't something that I ever feel the urge to do. And it's not something that is in my daily food plan, simply because I don't feel the need to snack. I don't feel the urge to snack and I don't actually need to snack. But whenever I was asked this question recently, it kind of reminded me of a story of something that happened last summer that really made me realize just how bad snacking can be and how much it can push you away from what it is you're trying to achieve with your body and with your health and fitness goals and what you could possibly do to overcome it. But before I get into the story, before I get into snacking, what I would like to do is to remind you that we have a competition currently running to win a copy of the 18-month Sculpt and Shred program, which we are currently launching, which closes on the 5th of November, 2019. So if you are listening to this after 2019, after the 5th of November, then the program is closed and you cannot win a copy and you cannot join because that is when CART closes. But if you're listening to this before the 5th of November, 2019, then make sure you leave a review on iTunes because we are going to be choosing one one lucky person who has left a review to win a copy of the Sculpt and Shred program. It is basically the world's most insane fitness program. Insane as in it gets you the most insane results and you can win a copy for free. We're going to be drawing the winner on the 5th of November. So make sure that you leave a review and don't leave a shitty review, by the way, like leave like a nice review. Don't be like, this this was the most crap podcast I'd ever heard in the entire world. If you leave me a review like that, we're probably not going to pick you as the winner just as a heads up. But if you leave me kind of a nice review and say like what you enjoyed about the podcast, maybe, you know, like as a few little helpful hints or tips, then, you know, we could, uh, we could choose you as the winner of the Sculpt and Shred program. So after you've listened to this episode, make sure you head over to iTunes or, or Spotify or wherever you're listening to this and leave a review about the Sculpt and Shred. No, Sculpted. No, not even that about the Strong Unsculpted podcast. So today, let's get back to what we're actually here to talk about, which is snacking. And let me first tell you a story about um, where this kind of really came to light for me. And it was when my parents-in-law were staying with us last summer. And my mother-in-law is absolutely and utterly beautiful. And she is in amazing shape. Like she is in her 70s, her early 70s, but she keeps herself really fit. And she goes out running every morning and she goes to the gym and she's conscious about what she eats. And she's so strong and so capable. And she's always been such an incredible help to me. Whenever she comes here and stays, like whenever my parents-in-law come, they're both Australian. And whenever they come, to stay with us, you know, we usually bring them over to stay for like usually three or four months. And people always say to me, oh my God, like, how do you have your, your parents-in-law staying for you, staying with you for that long? And I'm like, I love my parents-in-law. Like, I love them and I love having them stay. And my mother-in-law has always been such an incredible help with the kids. So like, I, I would have them, I would have them live with us permanently. I love having them here. But anyway, I noticed something whenever our, my parents-in-law were here staying with us last summer that my mother-in-law, even though she's in incredible shape and she runs every morning and she has an amazing figure, she perpetually under eats. And she's always trying to, you know, lose a couple of kilos. And she's always saying, oh, if I just lost an extra two kilos, you know, I would be happy. Or I just want to get down to, you know, X amount of kilos. And, and, you know, she would be quite focused on her weight. And, you know, which is a good thing because it means that she keeps her weight in check. But um, she's always talking about, you know, wanting to lose the extra kilos. And she's always talking about wanting to, you know, get get trimmer and, and whatever. And so because she's focused on being, you know, slightly lighter than she is, and she focuses a lot on scale weight, even though I'm always telling her off, I'm like, stop weighing yourself on the scales because you're building muscle in the gym. And But she just can't help it. She's old school. She's like, I know, I know. But too, she's always weighing herself, even though, even though I'm shouting at her and telling her not to. But um, whenever she was here last summer, I noticed that whenever she eats meals, she eats very, very, very light. So what would happen would be, 
she would get up in the morning and she would first of all go for her run and she's a really early riser. She gets up at like five. So quite often by the time we're up, she's already way off running around the park. And it's so funny because she has friends here. Like she only comes here like once every two years. And she has like friends that she meets in the park here. And whenever she goes running in the morning that she sees like every two years. And anyway, she gets up and she runs in the morning and then she comes back in and she quite often doesn't have breakfast or she'll have a shake for breakfast, you know, which really doesn't have a lot of calories in it. Or um, while she's making my father-in-law breakfast, she or making the kids breakfast she will be um, just eating like a little bit of theirs and a little bit here a little bit there maybe half a banana or you know she's just taking little bits so she won't eat breakfast but then she'll make the kids breakfast and she will cut the crusts off their toast if they want the crusts cut off and then she'll stand and she'll eat the crusts and she'll say oh this will be my breakfast and so she's just eating the crusts and I'm like you know Toby her name's Toby it's so funny her name's actually Sandra but her nickname's Toby so I'll say to her Toby like that's not enough breakfast because I'm very focused on food right I'm a bodybuilder I eat all the time. So I'll say to her, Toby, that's not enough food. You need to eat more. And she'll say, no, 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 it's fine. It's fine. But you know, I'm, I'm trying to lose those extra two kilos. I'm like, I know, but the way you eat those extra two kilos is actually by eating more. So anyway, she'll be like, no, no, no. So she won't eat the, you know, the food, whatever. But then but the problem is because she's exercised in the morning and then she goes and she does her weights as well. So she's exercised in the morning and she's done her weights. And then, you know, but she hasn't eaten very much breakfast. So by the time it kind of comes to mid morning, she's absolutely starving. And so she'll, you know, come into the kitchen, she'll make her coffee mid-morning and she will um you know, and, and she'll, you know, make my father-in-law coffee or whatever. And then she'll, you know, she'll have like a bite of this or she'll maybe have, you know, a, a biscuit or an Oreo and then she'll have a little bit of this and then she'll have a little bit of that. And so she's having these little snacky bits because she's hungry, she's she's snacking, but she's not eating enough to make her feel full. And, you know, so she doesn't really ever feel like she's overeating. And then it'll come to lunchtime. And again, it's, you know, not eating enough for lunch. She'll, she'll make a sandwich for, you know, a sandwich and a bowl of soup or something or whatever we've cooked for lunch for for my father-in-law, she'll cut the sandwich into three. Have you ever seen anyone cut a sandwich in three? I was like, what on earth are you doing? She said, oh, well, I cut it I cut it into three and Merv has two bits and I have the other bit. I was like, oh my goodness. So she'll cut it into three. She'll have like one triangle of a sandwich, right? She'll give the other two pieces to Merv and he'll have a bowl of soup and she'll maybe have like a little bowl of soup or something. But again, she's under eating at lunchtime because she doesn't, you know, I imagine she doesn't want to feel full. She doesn't want to feel, you know, eat those calories. And so then, you know, in the afternoon, it'll come to mid-afternoon she'll have another cup of coffee and or maybe she'll go out with the kids and we'll go out walking or she and I'll go shopping and again she'll snack she'll be like oh you know I'm so hungry and she'll go to the cupboard and she'll get a handful of nuts and then she'll maybe have some licorice all sorts and then she'll maybe have a little bit of this and a little bit of that she's not eating a lot but she's eating little bits little bits little bits snacking all the time and then it'll come to dinner and I'm like this woman needs to eat she's hardly eating anything all day so whenever I'm serving dinner like I'll slap a load of food in her plate she'll be like no 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 not too many potatoes or no that's that's massive. Oh, don't give me that big portion. Like if she, if I don't serve her and she has to serve herself, she'll have a little portion of this and a little bit of that and a little bit of this. Like she only has the tiniest amount on her plate. And then of course, in the evening time, she's hungry again. So she's, you know, in around the cupboards and she's picking and she's snacking and she's, you know, whatever. And and I, and I realized the last time she was here, I had this massive kind of realization where I thought, the reason why she struggles to lose weight, well, for two reasons. The first one is she's not eating enough. So so she her metabolism has slowed down. Her metabolism has down-regulated to... Um, to the food that she's eating, the amount of calories that she's eating, because whenever I actually totaled up her calories, and she knew I was doing this, by the way, I don't know whether she'll ever listen to this podcast, but like she, you know, I'm certainly not putting her down here at all. I, she's the most incredible woman, and I love her to, to bits. But she knows I'm always giving off about her eating habits, and she will eat whenever it comes to, um, know, whatever during the day I calculated her calories, and she was only eating like four. To 600, no, by 600 calories, I think I worked out during the day, six to 800 calories. That's all her meals were actually coming to, sometimes less. And I was saying to her, you're not eating enough calories. But then what I realized was well, she's not eating enough calories at her meals, but then she is filling up on different, you know, food during the day, different snacks, which are very, very calorific. So she's not losing weight because her metabolism has downregulated because she's not eating enough calories in order to boost her metabolism because she's tall like me. She's five foot eight. And so so she's not eating enough calories. But secondly, she's not losing enough weight because she's snacking too much during 
uh, the day. And so therefore, she's pushing her calories actually up quite high, but with very nutritionally light, but calorifically dense food. So her body isn't getting very well nourished with the food that she's eating. And she feels like she's not eating a lot and she's hungry all the time, but yet she still can't lose those extra kilos very, very easily. And whenever I get asked this question on Instagram, somebody asked me the other day and they said, you know, Kim, what, um, what, what do you snack on during the day? And I said, I, I never snack. And they said, well, you know, well, what, do, what do you eat then? And, and I really thought about it. And I thought, I'm getting asked this question so, you know, so often recently, I think it really needs to be its own podcast, because I do believe it's something a misconception that many people have about snacking. Because I will get asked as well, you know, what are some healthy snacks that I can have during the day? And my answer is always to people, if you are eating regularly meals during the day, you should have no need to snack no need to snack. And if you need to snack, then you're not eating enough at each mealtime. In my new Sculpt and Shred program, one of the brand new members in our private Facebook group actually wrote that she, you know, really hopes that this program is going to overcome, you know, help her to overcome her urge to snack because she said she just can't stop binging on, not bit, well, she called it binging, didn't even sound like she was eating that much. But in the evening, she's eating crisps and chips and, and you know, and chocolate. And, and she said, I just can't seem to stop snacking. Snacking. And I said, the reason you can't stop snacking is because you're hungry. And when you're hungry, you really just can't stop yourself from eating because you're absolutely starving and your body craves high fat, high sugary foods because it wants you to feed it. So I said to her, you will absolutely overcome this. But what you need to first get over is your fear of feeling full. And the fear of feeling full is actually something that is, is destroying many women's ability to achieve their goal. And I know this fear very well, and it ties into the whole not eating enough thing. So I realized recently that this is becoming an epidemic. And I, the reason why I understand it so well is because whenever I was prepping, I remember two years ago, I was prepping for a show and I had I had cut my calories very harshly because I really wanted to get lean. I was, I was scared of not being lean enough and I was absolutely ripped to the bone, but I had shredded my calories right down to about 1,300 calories for the last two weeks before the show. So I had gone down, you know, 1,800, 1,700, 1,600. 16, 15, 14, 13. I'd gone down to 1,300 for the last two weeks before the show and I was absolutely and utterly starving. I was starving all the time. I just walked around like looking at food. I used to dream of food. I used to walk into Starbucks and order a coffee and stare at the non-vegan goodies in the glass counter and think, I don't care if I am vegan, but if I could eat one of those right now, I would literally shove that whole piece of cheesecake into my mouth and I wouldn't even think about it. So I was just starving all the time. But I remember one day having this this um, this thought whenever I was eating, I had actually eaten quite a big meal. So I had saved up calories for the evening, which is what I used to do when I was prepping for a show because I can cope with being hungry during the day, but I just can't cope with being hungry in the evening. I think the evening is always worse because you can distract yourself during the day. And I remember one evening I'd saved up quite a lot of calories and I had a really big meal. Actually, I think it was a refeed day that I was having. So I was having a particular refeed meal, which is a meal that you eat, you know, once every week or once every couple of weeks. That is a big high carbohydrate meal, which resets your metabolism, which keeps your leptin levels high. Leptin is the hormone which uh, regulates your metabolism. And leptin um, is is the, the hormone that actually stops you from losing your menstrual cycle if you ever go down to very low body fat percentages. It's a drop in leptin that actually causes your menstrual cycle to, to drop off. And if you keep your leptin levels high with regular refeed meals, then that will never happen and your metabolism will stay very well regulated. But so I was having a refeed meal and I remember as soon as, you know, I couldn't wait to have this refeed meal. I've been looking forward to it all day. And the minute that I had this refeed meal and my stomach felt full, it triggered feelings of guilt. And I remember sitting there at the kitchen table full after eating, thinking, wow, isn't this strange? I feel guilty. I feel guilty that my stomach feels full. And it's like a Pavlovian response that we have. I don't know whether you've ever heard of Pavlov's dog, but Pavlov um, was a, a scientist who did an experiment where he um, experimented with a dog where he 
gave a dog a stick and the dog salivated. You know, he held it in front of the dog, gave the dog, dog a stick, the dog salivated. And then he kept doing this. He would, you know, hold up the stick, the dog would start to salivate. And then he started to ring a bell. So he held up the stick and he rang a bell at the same time and the dog salivated. And he did this a few more times until eventually he could just ring the bell and the dog would start to salivate. So that's called, so they call that a Pavlovian response. The bell did not make the dog salivate, but the dog recognized or linked to the response, uh, the sorry, the stimulus of the bell with the response that a, a steak would be coming or it just caused him to start salivating. So that's called a Pavlovian response. And that is what happens. Um, or that's what happened to me whenever I was sitting there and I was really full after having eaten. I had this Pavlovian response, this fear trigger in my body that being full in some way was bad. Now, I was working towards a very specific measurable goal. And so a refeed meal was part of those goals because a refeed meal, whenever you're dieting on a, you know, a bodybuilding program, kind of like we teach in my, you know, 18 month sculpt and shred program, or in my 12 week shred program, a refeed meal is an essential part of your diet, just like, you know, counting your macros and calories is, or just like going to the gym is, it's an essential part of your training regime to achieve a goal because you have a refeed meal to keep your leptin levels high and keep your metabolism regulated. So there's no reason why you should be feeling guilty after a refeed meal if you're working towards a measurable goal. But as I sat there having just eaten a large, you know, pizza or whatever it was I'd just eaten, I started to feel guilt. And I had a momentary realization that this is probably what is wrong, or this is, is actually what's happening to a lot of women around the world who are not working towards a measurable goal. And what they don't, they're not eating enough or they're under eating because when they eat and they feel full, then they feel like they have done something wrong. So it's almost like feeling full triggers feelings of guilt. So we don't want to feel full because that triggers feelings of guilt. So we under eat all the time, which causes us then to snack because we're starving. The snacks aren't good snacks that we're eating. So the snacks are high calorific, um, calorifically uh, big, but nutritionally low. And therefore we are getting caught in this constant cycle of eating too many calories coming from sugary fatty foods, not enough coming from nutritionally dense foods. And it's keeping us away from the thing we want most, which is usually to, you know, sculpt better muscles, to get rid of our mum tums or our cellulite or whatever. And we're just caught in this hamster wheel of going nowhere. And the problem is whenever you are not tracking Whenever you are not working towards a measurable goal and tracking your macros and calories, then you will feel guilty whenever you feel full. Whenever you are guessing, whenever you are not tracking your calories and macros, whenever you're not working towards a measurable goal, you're guessing. If you just want to, in inverted commas, lose weight or get lean or you're just on a diet, then you're not working towards a measurable goal. And the guessing causes guilt because you don't know if you should be eating this thing or not. And so it just gets to the point where everything you eat causes you to feel guilt. If you eat a salad, you're like, oh yeah, I'm so good. I had a salad. Look at me. I had a salad. And then if you eat like, you know, if you eat something that isn't a salad, maybe you eat like a bagel or something. You're like, oh my God, I'm so bad. I broke my diet. I had a bagel. But you don't know whether eating that bagel was bad or good because you're just guessing, right? You're just, you're not actually like, okay, this bagel is part of my diet. And this bagel has, you know, 32 grams of carbs and X, you know, whatever. You're, you're not like measuring it and, and working it into your daily plan. You're just guessing. So the bagel causes you to feel guilty. So in, in my programs, I always talk about, you know, if something is not bad or good, just, you know, in and of itself, something is good if it's moving you towards a measurable goal and something is bad if it's moving you away from a measurable goal. So if you set a goal that you want to achieve a certain result and you make a choice that moves you away from that result, then the choice was bad. If you make a choice that moves you towards that result, then the choice was good. But unfortunately, many of us just call ourselves and feel bad all the time. We feel guilty when we eat. We feel guilty when we feel full. We feel bad whenever we've eaten something because we're not actually moving towards a measurable goal. And I totally and utterly understand this, but I do see it as being an enormous problem. And I do see it as a question that comes up constantly with, um, you know, in my Instagram feed and on my Facebook page uh, that people want to know what they should be snacking on and they want to know what I snack on. And, you know, and, and I'm like, I don't people, right? But rather than just saying I don't, I thought, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make a podcast episode and I'm going to teach people how to eat, right? So 
at the minute, I am on a shred for going to Australia. We're going to Australia this Christmas, which is Christmas 2019. And we're going away for a month with my family to Christmas. To Christmas. No, we're not going. We're going to Christmas. We're going to Australia for Christmas. And I set a goal because I love working towards a measurable goal. And I said to my husband, let's set a goal to get really shredded for going away to Australia. And he was like, okay, sure, why not? So I made aside our plans and we're working on the shred and we're working towards this measurable goal of going, you know, of getting shredded for going to Australia. And so I am eating 1,600 calories a day. Now, I started on 2,000 calories a day. Okay, that was four weeks ago. I'm like four weeks in. So I started on 2,000. I dropped to 1,900, then 1,800, then 1,700. Then this week, I'm on 1,600. Now, I'm making extremely good progress. So I may just stay on 1,600. I may not even drop any lower. And of course, I'm training in the gym five days a week. And I'm doing cardio when I've gradually increased my cardio from 45 minutes per day to 60 minutes per day. This is what it takes to shred. You gradually decrease your calories and you gradually increase your cardio. So I then, um, I, whenever I'm working out my plan, so um, I, I worked out my plan and my husband's plan, our food plan for the week, I aim to eat at least five times a day. And whenever you aim to eat at least five times a day, by the time you're hungry again, it's time for another meal. See this whole eating three times a day thing, this whole like eating breakfast, lunch, and dinner? I do not know where this came from. Actually, I do know where it came from. Do you want to know where eating breakfast, lunch, and dinner came from? Human beings were not designed to eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Human beings were designed to be snackers. We are berry pickers. We're foragers. Our our digestive systems and our bodies are set up to be foragers, which means we are designed to eat little and often. I have never forced my kids to eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner ever. At the minute, we do have a breakfast, lunch, and dinner routine in the house. But if they are hungry in between meals, which they quite often are, or if they're hungry, you know, outside of those times, I've never forced them to wait for dinner. Never, ever, ever said, no, you can't because dinner's on the table. I believe that a child is very much in tune with their body and they know when they're hungry and they know when they want to eat. And so as long as they're active and healthy and whatever and of sound mind, then I believe they, they know when they need to eat. And I think it's important that they do eat little and often. So my kids are great grazers, right? Because that's the way I eat too. So whenever I plan my food, I never look at breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Oh, I was telling you where it came from. So breakfast, lunch, and dinner came from um, the Industrial Revolution. It came from whenever kids started being sent to school, and it came from whenever people started being factory workers, and they realized that they had to give them breaks. So people realized they had to eat breakfast in the morning before they went out to work in the factories. Then they got a mid-morning break, you know, for a cup of coffee or whatever. Then lunchtime was a longer break, so that's when lunch had to be eaten. You couldn't just stop and eat lunch at any time during your work. Lunch had to be eaten at a certain time, and then dinner dinner was at a certain time because the work finished. So the work finished and then dinner was later in the evening. So that's where human beings evolved into a breakfast, lunch, and dinner thing. It's not that that's the way our bodies are designed. It's that that's the way we evolved. So I, whenever I'm planning my food, yes, I do have breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And those are kind of the main meals of the day. But I would always have breakfast in the morning, usually around 8 a.m., 8 or 9 a.m. Depends if I'm doing cardio first. At the minute, I'm doing cardio first. So I will get up in the morning, I'll have a cup of coffee, and then I will get on the Stairmaster and I will do an hour's cardio. After the Stairmaster, I have my oatmeal. It's not a huge amount. It's only 20 grams of oats. Uh, It's made with water. I add a scoop of protein powder, vanilla protein powder, and 50 grams of blue blueberries and just a splash of oat milk, right? So then I have breakfast. Then I go off and train in the gym at 10 a.m. And then immediately post-gym at 11 a.m., I have my post-workout shake, which is 50 grams of vegan protein. Um, I use the Protein Works protein here in the UK. If you go onto my website, the sculptedvegan.com forward slash TPW for the Protein Works, we have 30% discounts for the Protein Works all through the UK. So I use uh, the Protein Works, I think it's chalk mint cookie, it's called protein powder. And I um, blend that just with ice and water. And I add in a scoop of Vitargo, which is a high molecular weight carbohydrate, which is absorbed through the um, small intestine very, very quickly and pumped into the muscles after training. So it replenishes glycogen stores in the muscles very quickly after training, very good for building muscle directly after training. So I will have that at about 11 a.m. after I finish training. 
And then I come home and I check in with my family and then I come to my office, which is at home here, which is where I run my business from. And I usually have some meetings and I start to work. Then by the time I start to feel hungry again, it's usually around 1.30 or 2. So I've already had two meals. I actually count a protein shake as a meal. So I've already had a meal in the morning, uh, which is my oatmeal. Then I have my protein shake. Then usually at around 2 p.m. I'm hungry again. And by that point, then lunch is ready. I actually have a, a private chef here at home. Um, he's a, the chef in Team Sculpted Vegan. So he develops a lot of the recipes in, in Team Sculpted Vegan, but he also is here, you know, always cooking and preparing food at home. So he makes my lunch for me. So he makes lunch and I usually then go down to the kitchen and I will have lunch. And my lunch is not very calorific, but it's very nutritionally dense. Lunch today was a large bowl of homemade lentil soup with carrots and celery and onion um, and a hundred grams of spinach put into the soup. And then I had a vegan burger. Oh my goodness, this absolutely amazing high protein. Well, he didn't even make it. It was like it was bought from one of the supermarkets. Can't even remember the name, but it was absolutely stunning. It was so juicy and so beautiful. And I wedged it in between lettuce leaves with some fresh tomato and cucumber. And he made like a burger out of lettuce leaves. So I had a big bowl of lentil soup and a burger. That kept me so full after lunch, so full at lunch at 2 p.m. So then I I worked for the rest of the afternoon and did whatever I had to do. And then dinner in our house, because our kids get hungry, is usually at around 5 p.m. Usually between 5 and 6, but around 5 p.m. So by the time 5 p.m. comes again, I'm hungry again, right? But I've already had three meals, but I'm, I'm hungry again at 5 p.m. So I go downstairs. I don't need to snack because now I'm going to have dinner. So dinner tonight was uh, black beans and chickpeas, which had been... Um, I think all sautéed in a pan with some cumin and smoked paprika and uh, cinnamon and what else was in there? Uh, cayenne pepper, right? So sautéed off in a pan with some of those and some scrambled tofu on the side with garlic and spring onions and tamari and nutritional yeast and loads of fresh coriander or cilantro in America. So that had been, that, that was on the side and then there was a large green salad to eat with it. So that was dinner. And after dinner, I was, I was full. Like I was so full. I couldn't eat anymore. Again, there was only about four 434 calories in my dinner. There was 34 grams of protein. Um, and I can't remember, I think 22 grams of carbs and not very much fat, maybe like, um, I think it was like eight grams of fat or something. So that was dinner. Now I'm sitting here in the evening. I'm at, I'm at my house. I'm recording a podcast now. It's quite late in the evening. I think it's about 8.30 p.m. And or 9 p.m. And I, after this podcast, I'm going to go downstairs. I'm going to have a protein shake. So I'm not even hungry because I didn't actually eat dinner tonight until um, until quite late. I think it was like 6.30. But if I eat dinner at 5, then I'm usually hungry again by 9 p.m. And by 9 p.m., I'm due another protein shake. Now, quite often, it's just protein powder blended with ice and water. That's all it is because I don't have any extra calories for bananas or blueberries or or even oat milk or anything to go in it. But I, I if you blend protein powder with ice and just a little bit of water and make it quite thick. It becomes almost like a chocolate peanut butter milkshake. And, you know, although it may not be the most appetizing thing in the world, whenever you're starving, which I usually am by 9 or 10 p.m. before I go to bed, whenever you drink that, and I quite often eat it with a spoon, you're full afterwards. The feeling of hunger goes away. It may not be what you're craving in that moment. Last night, I was so hungry after leg day, and I was like, oh my God, I'm starving, I'm starving. And I was like, I really just wanted to eat something. I was looking at the bananas, I was looking at bagels, I was looking at all these things. And of course, I could have had any of these things, even though I'm shredding, I could still choose to have them if I wanted. But I was like, no, make your protein shake because after I had my protein shake, I knew that I would have felt full. So I made my protein shake and I drank it. And within 10 minutes, I felt completely full and completely satisfied. So at no point today did I feel the urge to have a packet of chips, a bar of chocolate, a cookie, you know, whatever. I had a, I had an oat milk cappuccino this morning, just maybe a little bit of oat milk. I had another one after my lunch and I had another black coffee this evening whenever well, it was actually very early evening. I had to go shopping. I'm going to a big event next week in New York and I had to go um, shopping for a capsule wardrobe and I had a coffee there. So I had three coffees today and I had all those food, but there was no room for snacking and there was no need to snack because I didn't I didn't have any every time I was hungry it was ready for another meal uh, it was time for another meal and this is where people fall down so 
women get stuck in and men too get stuck in this breakfast, lunch and dinner mentality. And they, they don't, they're, first of all, the, the main problem is they're not tracking their food. So they're just on a generic goal of losing weight or losing body fat. And they're not actually, you know, working. They haven't created a plan to work towards that goal. And so therefore they're just guessing when they're eating and the guessing is causing guilt. They're not tracking. But then secondly, they're trying to stick to this, you know, eating less at meals which is causing them to feel hungry permanently, which is causing them to feel deprived, which is causing them to snack. And then thirdly, they're not they're not eating often enough. They're getting stuck in the breakfast, lunch, and dinner mentality. And so they're, they're hungry in between meals and they want to have healthy snacks, but they're not sure what healthy even means. And they're not sure what they should be eating. And they're not even sure how many calories are in their food. Now, I'm not saying that you should get stuck in counting calories and counting macros. And whenever I'm not dieting for a show or whenever I'm not working towards a specific goal, then I do not count calories. Whenever I am bulking in off season, I'm just looking to put on a huge amount of muscle. I eat like a horse. Food is nature's natural anabolic. Food is how your body builds muscle. Whenever you are eating in a calorie surplus, then you know if you have a little bit left over to store as body fat, you know that your body has used everything that it can to build muscle and there is nothing left over. And that is um, that is why people eat in a calorie surplus whenever they're bulking. Because if you have a little bit left over for body fat, it means that your body has taken everything it needs to build and repair muscle, which is exactly what you're trying to do. But whenever I am on a shred and I'm working towards a specific fat loss goal, then yes, I do track and I track because I don't want to have any guesswork. There's no, something is not good or bad whenever you're tracking. It's just either part of your plan or it's not. So if I want to, like my husband, whenever I was making out his plan, he was like, I am not drinking protein powder with just ice and water. I'm sorry. He said, it's not worth it to me. I don't, I don't care. And I was like, okay, so how do you like your smoothie to be? He was like, I want half a banana, three strawberries. I don't mind having the light soy milk, you know, the calorifically low one, but I, I want I want it to be made with milk and there needs to be something in it other than protein powder. So I worked his macros and calories so that he could have half a banana, three strawberries, 400 milliliters of Alpro light soy milk and two scoops of vanilla protein powder in his smoothie. And that was him happy because he was like, I'm not eating, I'm not drinking a smoothie with just ice and water. Whereas me, I'm an athlete. He used to be a professional athlete too. He used to play rugby. Actually, he played for his country, for Australia. Um, and so he's not, you know, but he's not a professional athlete anymore. But, you know, I am. And I, so I'm like, I'm going to suck it up, pull up my big girl panties, and I am just going to drink the protein powder with the water. So, but you can work it into your macros. And if you're like, I just love bagels, and I can't survive the day unless I have a bagel dripping with vegan butter, then I'm going to like, well, you know what, sister? You work that into your plan. You may have to give up something somewhere else. You know, Vitargo is very high in carbohydrates. So um, you may want to give up Vitargo to have your bagel, but like you rock on if that's important to you. So, and I never go very, very low carb. People always ask me what I'm shredding. You know, do I go low, do I go low carb? Absolutely not. My macros at the minute are 45% protein. Um, 30% carbohydrates and 25% fat. So I've gone very high in protein and a little lower in carbs, but my carbs never drop below 30% when shredding and my, my fat never drops below 25% because your body needs fats and it needs carbs. If you don't have the carbs to build and repair the muscle, then your body is going to drop muscle, it's going to eat off muscle tissue and it's going to break it down into amino acids and use it for energy and you're going to work against yourself and what you're trying to achieve. So you just need to make sure that you are tracking, you're not guessing, and then the guilt will go away. So what is the solution to this problem? I mean, if you're a snacker and you're like, okay, this is all making sense, Kim. I'm totally like, I'm on board for changing this. You know, I really want to like stop snacking and I really want to, you know, have an absolutely shit hot body. What do I do? So, well, there's a couple of things that you need to do. And the first one is you need to plan in advance plan in advance. You cannot guesswork your way to a, a fantastic body. There is not one bodybuilder on earth. Maybe there is one. I'm sure there's a few actually, but no, no one that I know that stands on a professional stage as a professional bodybuilder and doesn't count macros and calories on the way up to the show. Maybe they don't count the entire way, but 
at the end of their cut, they are counting macros and calories because every single calorie counts whenever you are getting down to very low percentages of body fat. So if you plan in advance, then there's no guesswork. There's no, should I eat this or should I not eat that? Or, oh, there's no, like, you don't like take an Oreo and go, oh my God, I feel so guilty because I had an Oreo. It's, you know, you just, you're like, okay, sometimes like I think I really, really, really need some sugar. So I whip out my fitness pal and I look at the, you know, the back of like a, a square of lint dark chocolate and I go, okay, it has 50 calories. And I scan the thing, how much macros, and I, and I scan it in and I see how far over my calories it's going to push me. And then I go, okay, well, what'll happen if I shave off, you know, a little bit here or shave off this or I don't eat this? So I play around in my fitness pal with my food diary to see, can I afford to have this chocolate? And sometimes by the time I've done that, I go, oh, you know what, it's not even worth it. Don't want the chocolate. And I put it back. Or sometimes I go, well, actually, do you know what? I'm happy to have a little less for Targo and a little less here and a little less there. So I can have this chocolate. So it seems very anal. People are like, oh my God, I would never live my life like that. I'm like, well, that's no problem at all. Like, you don't have to live your life like that. But the thing is, what do you, you know, people, quite often the people who say I would never live my life like that are the ones who are fat and unhappy, right? There's nothing wrong with being fat. If you love being fat, I'm happy for you. But a lot of people are fat and unhappy, but they're just not willing to do whatever it takes to shred the fat and feel happy and proud about their bodies. So, it, you know, and a lot of people are scared about, about tracking. They go, oh my God, I really have no idea how to do this. And I totally understand that as well because it is daunting in the beginning and it does take a little bit of work. Like I can now whip out my fitness pal on my phone and I can change the calories and I can change the macros and I can just start inputting and taking away food. Input this, take this away. Input this, take this away. I can literally play around with a, you know, with my fitness pal until I completely and not only fit my macros to where I want them to be. And then I just eat the same thing every single day for a week. In fact, I eat the same thing every single day for the entire higher prep quite often because I can't be bothered to do a meal plan every week except my husband is shredding with me this time and he's like I need variety in my food I can't eat the same thing every day so I have changed ours up quite a lot you know week to week just adding in chickpeas and beans and, and quinoa some weeks and to, you know adding in taking away different things because I want him to have a bit more variety and I have to say I've actually really enjoyed it this time I've, I've enjoyed putting in the effort on a Sunday and doing the meal plan and getting the variety so you can have a lot of variety but it does take work but the thing is anything that you want in this life that's worth having takes work anything. You cannot cheat your way to an amazing body. You cannot buy your way to an amazing body. Yes, you can get liposuction and breast implants and butt implants and a tummy tuck or whatever, but you it, the, none of that will ever substitute the body that you will be able to have if it's something that you have worked for in the gym and worked for in the kitchen because 90% of your results come from the kitchen. Whenever people join my Sculpt and Shred program, the ones, or even my 12-week shred program, the ones who get to the end and don't get the good results or don't get the results they expected, they always, always come into the group and they say, you know what? I didn't follow the nutrition 100%. I probably followed it maybe 50, 60, or 70% because I honestly believed that if I just did the gym workouts and, you know, with, with intensity, like insanely well, that I would get the result. And they, they always say, but Kim was right. Kim was right. Listen to what Kim said. Because I always say, and I say it in the PDF, if you don't nail your nutrition, you won't get the results. And, no, and like, half of them don't believe me. They're like, no, I'll be different. But you know how I know that that's true? Because whenever I first started in the gym and whenever I, I didn't track and plan my food and whenever I first shredded for my first show, I thought that I, I was a nutritionist. I was like, I know, I knew so much about nutrition. I'm not going to listen to my coach and do what he tells me to do because I know more than him because I am a vegan and I knew so much about the human body and nutrition and I completely ignored the plan he gave me and I decided to do my own plan and I thought, well, I'm just going to keep eating normally but I'm going to do an insane amount of work and I did so much cardio and so much training and I did not get shredded. I mean, I looked okay on stage but I did not look anywhere near as good as I did the next year when I followed my coach's advice to the letter. 
And the only thing I did differently the next year was I planned and tracked every morsel that passed my lips. And that's what I've done this year. I'm only four weeks into the current shred that I'm doing and my results are insane. If you're following me on Instagram, you'll see how insane they are. And if you're not following me on Instagram, go to my page, The Sculpted Vegan, and follow along with my 10-week shred journey and you will be amazed by how quick my results are. But I only get very, very fast results because I track everything. So you need to plan in advance. You need to sit down with my fitness pal, familiarize yourself with it. If you're in my Sculpt and Shred program, which I know many of you are, you'll see that we have very detailed lessons broken down in the members area, in video lessons, teaching you exactly how to do this. And if you plan in advance, then you will know exactly what you can eat, exactly what you can't eat. You can plan to put in all the things that you love, like bagels or toast or or even a pizza or whatever it is that you really love to have. You can have all of those in there. So you never, ever, ever, ever need to feel guilty about anything you put in your mouth ever again because you know that everything you put in your mouth has been plaqued has plaqued no has been tracked and planned as part of your diet the second thing that you need to make sure that you do whenever you're tracking and planning your food is to eat often again it goes back to the story i told earlier about when i were i was trying um planning my food for this shred and ryan's i put in for us to eat five times a day so we eat breakfast mid-morning protein lunch dinner, and then evening protein. For you, it could be uh, the other way around. You could have afternoon protein and then eat your evening meal quite late because you never want to go to bed hungry. There's nothing worse than going to bed hungry. See this shite that people talk about? Oh, you should never eat after 6 p.m. I'm like, why? Uh, Because it'll make you put on weight. No, it won't make you put on weight. What makes you put on weight is eating more calories than you burn off. It's a very simple equation. Eat calories in surplus of what you burn and you will put on weight. And if you don't, if you eat less than that, you will lose weight. It doesn't matter if you eat after 6 p.m. People say to me, should I do my cardio fasted? Doesn't matter. What do you mean doesn't matter? I'm like, eat breakfast, do it before, do it after, do it standing on your head, do it at night, do it in the morning, do rowing, walking, running, cross training, whatever. It doesn't matter. Just the most important thing about cardio is that it's scheduled and it's done. It doesn't matter if you eat before it, eat after it. If you never eat at all, you just, just get it done. And they're like, oh, really? What people don't realize is it doesn't matter how you move the variables around it what matters is that you remain consistent with your nutrition and your training it's not really important how you time everything it's more important as to that you remain consistent so you need to make sure that you're eating often whenever you're planning your food because if you eat often you're not going to feel hungry and whenever you do feel hungry it'll be time for another meal so you're like oh this is great i feel hungry oh great it's dinner time eat dinner don't feel hungry anymore and then later on in the evening hmm, definitely starting to feel a bit hungry yet oh great it's time for a protein shake great lovely thick delicious chocolate peanut cookie you know protein shake lovely and cold eat it with a spoon you feel like you've just had a big chocolate dessert delicious and then you go to bed so you need to make sure that you're eating planning in advance and that you're eating often enough the third thing that you need to make sure that you are doing is that you are eating enough too many people, whenever they start planning and tracking their food, especially if they want to get over snacking, is that they go through that guilt of feeling full and so they don't want to eat enough. Now, it, people underestimate how much they need to eat in order to raise their metabolism and burn calories. I am on a shred at the minute, like a full on intense shred, and I'm eating 1600 calories. That's extremely low for me. Normally, in off season, I eat about 3000 calories a day, and I maintain 18% body fat all year round. At the minute, I'm eating 1600 calories, and I'm doing cardio because I'm on a specific shred for a specific timeline, and my body fat has dropped to about 12%. So I'm 12% body fat now. By the time I go to Australia in four weeks, I will be 10% body fat. That was my goal. And then I will rise back up again because I'm not going to be on a shred in Australia. So I'm going to put on a little bit more body fat and then I'm going to go into a bulk whenever I come back and I'm going to bulk hard for the summer and then I'll shred again for the summer. This is what bodybuilders do. This is what I teach you to do in my programs, especially in the 18-month Sculpt and Shred. I teach you how to bulk, how to put pack on a huge amount of muscle and then how to shred it all off in you know six to 10 weeks and then how to pack on more muscle and then how to shred off all the fat to uncover the muscle. So you, you work 
worked through very much a bodybuilder type program, but bodybuilders don't diet all year round and we don't stay on a diet all year round. We we build muscle through eating more calories and training hard and then we shred and then we build and then we shred. So we're never afraid of putting on body fat. I don't care if I put on body fat because I know that I'm putting on body fat for a specific goal, a specific time frame, and then I know that I'm going to shred it all off again. And I know that I can shred it all off. So it's very easy. So you need to make sure that you're eating enough. Even whenever you are on a calorie restricted diet, you have to make sure that you're eating very calorifically light but nutritionally dense food. If you saw the enormous bowl of lentil soup I had for lunch, it would have shocked you. It, it was like three cupfuls, you know, like a cup, like a measuring cup. In fact, it was probably four. It was insane. And it was filled with a massive amount of spinach as well. Spinach, very high in protein, very high in fiber, very, very low in calories. So it bolted out. My stomach was bulging afterwards. I was so full after eating that and the burger. But yet my lunch only had about 500 calories in total. So, I mean, not anything, five, nine, no, three, yeah, probably about 500 calories in my lunch. In fact, less, about 450 calories in my lunch, but it was an enormous lunch. So you need to make sure that you're eating enough. You're making choices of your food, not like my mother-in-law where she's eating calorifically um, dense, but very nutritionally light food because she's snacking all during the day. You need to reverse it, make sure you're eating nutritionally dense, but calorifically light food. So you can eat a lot of it, but you're not getting a lot of calories. The last thing that you need to make sure that you do is that you have something like a healthy, you know, not a snack, but something healthy that you can eat if the urge takes you. So sometimes whenever I'm absolutely starving in the evening, if I'm really low in calories, if I cut my calories down to maybe 15 or 1400, if I ever have to go that low, I do find myself really hungry in the evening. So what I do is I keep a massive bowl of salad in the fridge. When I say salad, I mean, you know, all different types of lettuce leaves. So rocket or arugula, I think you call it in America, um, rocket leaves, you know, cherry tomatoes, um, uh, cucumber, celery, radishes. I love radishes. And so I keep this, and that's usually actually all that's in it, this huge big bowl of salad in the fridge. Sometimes sprouts as well. I do enjoy sprouts. So sprouts is in like sprouted seeds. Um, and so, but you know, nothing calorific like, you know, nuts or pumpkin seeds or anything like that because they are higher in fat. So I will keep that in the fridge. And then if I'm hungry in the evening, I will scoop a lot of it into a massive big bowl. And all I will do is sprinkle it with apple cider vinegar. The apple cider vinegar I use is called natural umber. You can only get it here in Northern Ireland. It tastes like salt and vinegar crisps. You know those really expensive salt and vinegar crisps that you get that are absolutely delicious? That's what this stuff tastes like. It is insanely good. So I sprinkle um, apple cider vinegar over my salad, just a sprinkle. There's hardly any calories in it, no oil and some um, salt and some herbs. And I eat that and see just the eating of the salad. Like it takes me 10 or 15 minutes, like dig in and eat and crunch and crunch and chew and chew and then dig and eat and crunch and crunch. Quite often after it, I feel full, but I haven't really eaten very many calories, but it gives you that feeling of eating because whenever you're hungry, you want to feel like you've eaten something and you've eaten something substantial and it's taken you a reasonable amount of time to eat it. And then it does trigger the brain to tell your tummy that it's full. So I always have something like that in the fridge that I can snack on. So I don't, if I do ever, you know, find myself, you know, really, really hungry and I need to eat something. So you don't want to have something like hummus in the fridge unless it's in your macros and your calories because hummus is actually very high in carbs um, and, and very high in fat. So it's actually a very calorific food. Yes, it is healthy. Chickpeas are very good for you. So is tahini, so is olive oil. You know, all of the things that are in hummus are very healthy, but, you know, we're not talking about health here. We're talking about, you know, health and working towards a specific goal. But you always want to make sure that you have snacks or something that you can eat that is fresh and healthy and available just to grab. And I find a great big salad is, is so easy for doing that because it takes five minutes to prepare. You just bucket into the fridge in a big bowl, you know, put a plate over the top of the bowl, and then you just dig it out with a spoon whenever you want to eat it. Or if there's enough in that bowl and you think you're going to eat the whole thing, you sit down with the bowl and you eat the entire thing out of the salad bowl with a fork. That is what I do. So that is one of my best tips for if you ever do, you know, get the binging urge, binge on a big bowl of salad and you'll never, ever feel guilty and it won't push you off your macros or your calories. So I hope this episode episode was helpful. I really wanted to make something about snacking 
Because, you know, I just don't think people understand snacking is the problem. I think that they think that snacking is normal and healthy because we're taught, you know, three square meals a day and two snacks. Well, I don't see snacks as a meal. I see protein shakes as a meal because they are a meal for me. But I don't see, you know, a snack as a meal. And you really, truly do not need to snack if you are eating and training like an athlete. And if you always plan to eat five to six meals a day, then by the time you are hungry again, it's time for another snack. And you never need to feel hungry because we don't like to feel hungry. But I also don't want you to ever feel guilty when you feel full, because if you're working towards a calorie controlled, macro controlled goal, then eating just becomes it's either moving you towards your goal or it's moving you away from your goal. But if you're not um, uh, tracking and planning, then you don't know if you're working towards a goal or you're not. You're just permanently on a diet. And I hate it whenever I see people here just saying, oh yeah, I'm on a diet and I'm on a diet. I'm like, you're always on a bloody diet. It's like my mother-in-law, she's always on a diet. And I just wish she would eat more in order to raise her metabolism. And I know that she would probably lose those extra couple of kilos if she did eat more and, and raise her metabolism. And she did eat food that is very good for her. One of the things that people say whenever they first join my Sculpt and Shred, I'm seeing it all the, minute, all the time at the minute with these new members coming in, is they say, oh my God, this feels so weird. I've never eaten as much food. And they also realize they're not eating enough protein. Once they start tracking, they're like, I was literally hardly eating any protein. And protein is so thermogenic, which means that it causes, it takes energy from your body in order to digest the protein, in order to break it down. So the more protein you eat, the harder your body has to work to break it down, aka the more calories it needs to burn. But whenever people come into the program, they say, I have never eaten this amount of food before. And what they mean is they've never felt full permanently because on this program, you feel full all the time, apart from whenever you don't feel full and then it's time for another meal. So people aren't used to this. They're used to, you know, working whenever they're losing body fat, they're used to feeling hungry. They 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 think hunger is part of getting an amazing body or hunger is part of dieting. I'm dieting at the minute and I am never hungry, never starving, never feel deprived. My husband actually said to me the other day, he's never done a shred before because he's not a bodybuilder. And he said to me, I actually feel like I'm on a bulking program because I'm eating so often and I'm not hungry. He said, I truly feel like I'm bulking. And I said, I know what you mean because a lot of people do. They come into my Sculpt and Shred and they are dieting in inverted commas, but yet they're eating more than they've ever eaten in their entire life and the body fat drops off them. So it's really not about what you eat. It's knowing how to eat to achieve your goal and how to eat for your exact particular body composition, um, your lean body mass, how, you know, how much body fat you have. It's about calculating all of that and knowing exactly what to do and exactly what to, how to eat. And that is what moves you towards your goals. And that's what stops the need for any kind of snacking. So I thank you so much for tuning in. I was going to say, I hope you enjoyed this episode. It's like, I already said, I hope you enjoyed this episode, but it is getting quite late at night. And I have to be honest, I am getting quite tired. Um, and so my brain is not functioning correctly, but I uh, hopefully I have conveyed all the information that I wanted to convey. And I do just want to remind you again about the um, a competition that we have running, which is uh, that if you leave a review on the... Um, uh, if you leave a review on iTunes or on Spotify, then you can win a copy of the 18-month Sculpt and Shred program, which is closing on the 5th of November. But we are giving away um, a free program. It's not even a program. It's a full members area, lifetime access. It's worth um, $1,497. That's what we charge for the program. But you can um, win one of those if you leave a review on iTunes or Spotify or Google Play or wherever you listen to this podcast. Leave a review and then just send me a message on Instagram, The Sculpted Vegan, with a photograph of the review, a screenshot of the review. Just send me a DM. We answer all our DMs and then we are going to choose someone from the reviews, we're going to take all of them, put the names into a big hat, and we are, well, actually, it'll be a random picker online, will be a hat, and we're going to give away a copy of the 18-month Sculpt and Shred program. Um, and if you want to find out more details about the program, it may be closed if you're listening to this after the 5th of November, 2019. But if you want to find out more about the program, simply go to our website, thesculptedvegan.com um, forward slash join, and you can find out more about the program, and you can chat to one of our team members there on the live chat if you want to. And um, yeah, it's absolutely epic. It's going to going to launch, uh, or we're actually starting on the 11th of November with four weeks of private coaching. 
And I can't wait to begin because these athletes are, well, they're not athletes, they're regular women. But as soon as they come into the program, we call them athletes and they are really going to make incredible changes with their bodies. So thank you so much for listening. I would love for you to leave a review and win that program and make sure that you tune in next week for another episode of Strong and Sculpted by Kim Constable, aka me, the Sculpted Vegan. And I will speak to you guys very, very soon. Thank you so much for listening and bye for now.